Welcome guys, Nadim Nasser, OTI Master Instructor, coming to you with another video again on the forehand. And thank, thank you everybody who has come to our clinics and is working with us online over the last several months. Um, it gave us a lot of ideas of what else we can talk to you about in regards to um, smoothening out, making your shots more efficient. On the forehand, a lot of thing, a lot of players want the forehand to get better, and we try to find methods and ways for, especially in, in, in today's times, you can work on that by yourself, diligently, focused, and consciously on making your shots better. One part of the forehand that seems to be elusive to many players is what happens during the contact zone. Okay, and in regards to what happens is what's my arm structure like, what's the tip of the racket doing, what's my wrist doing, what's my tension doing. And I would like for you to, to try the following example or the following exercise. I'm going to show you first here from the side view and then I'm going to hit a few balls. And essentially what you want to ensure is that at contact there are some different styles. Some players have a straight arm like Nadal and Federer, others have a slightly bent structure which is the easier and in my opinion the easier one to learn and also the better one to learn. Um, again, remember Federer and Nadal are not the everyday tennis player. Djokovic not either, of course, he may even be the best there is, but the arm structure being slightly bent makes sure that you can lift from the shoulder and see whether you've lifted from the shoulder because the arm structure should remain bent. Okay, And this is important because we want to ensure that the forehand becomes a shoulder lift motion. And depending on how much force you're under and how fast you're playing, you will have subtleties in this, but nonetheless it will occur. So in other words, if I set up and have a full swing, okay, you probably don't see a whole lot happening. You, see, uh, you, see, you probably just hear the sound, but you don't really hear what is happening with the structure throughout the contact phase. And essentially, in order for me to make sure that I am always getting the ball to go in the direction that I want it to, I'm not trying to hit the ball over here on the next court. So my, short, my, my purpose of my swing should never be here. It should never come around. When you see me finishing all the way over here, that's because of the speed with which I'm swinging and the likely force that I'm under. What I need to make sure I do is that I swing up and out and that I keep the structure of my hand and the racket intact throughout contact point and after that contact point until after the ball has long left my strings. Okay, so let's look at this one more time. I'm going to go through my regular routine and make contact and now after contact I want to make sure that the structure remains and I am simply having a shoulder lift. For the purposes of exaggeration for someone who has a very short hitting zone, we tell them to exaggerate and keep the tip of the racket literally tracing a wall on the, on the outside here before anything occurs and sometimes we even keep them from letting that racket travel all the way across because we're doing it in such a slow manner. So let me demonstrate this. I'm simply going to set up in my turn position, I'm going to self-feed the ball and for purposes of exaggeration, I'm going to keep the tip of the racket on the right side. Okay, one more time. Turning, I'm making contact in front and I'm simply keeping the tip of the racket on the right side. Now, what would happen at regular speed is I would come over across. Let me show you. Okay, again. Right? I'm going to let the swing occur and, and let it go. Release it. Let it happen. Let it come to a natural end. But what I need to be conscious about is that at contact, I am having simply this movement before any of this other stuff that we are sometimes taught to do happens. So the goal is for me to swing in the direction of my target as opposed to anything else. So what, I, what can I do? An exercise that I highly recommend you do is you record yourself like I am doing. You record yourself from the side view and you record yourself from the back view. And what I want you to do is I want you to get yourself at contact. So by the time you see I have a racket that has no strings and the goal is I don't have to worry about what happens to the ball but I can have a regular swing. And what I want you to be able to do that will significantly help is I want you to stop that recording at the point of contact and see whether you have done any kind of changes to your structure or whether you're able to maintain your structure throughout. 
Okay, see I'm trying to already get that ball. Okay, and there, there should be, throughout the contact phase, all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep the racket calm so I ensure it goes through the opening. And I'm trying to see at, at contact, is my racket flush or not? Because if the racket isn't flush with the ground, right? It's not perpendicular to the ground at contact. I am going to make changes to where the ball is and ends up going. So for down the line, the strings should be relatively straight up and down. Pointing for cross court, it's still flush. It's at a little bit more of a, a, a angle out in front because I'm trying to send the ball cross court. Down the line, cross court, but you see that my wrist structure does not change. I'm simply making contact a bit further out in front. Let me show you this from the back view one more time. I'm turning and I want to make sure I'm flush. Again, turning, make sure I'm flush. And if I can keep my wrist from moving or my swing from going too merry-go-around-ish and I can lift and lengthen out with the same structure shortly before, at and after contact, I will likely clean up a lot of my strokes that I'm otherwise struggling with because of a short hitting zone, because of an overactive wrist, because of too much tension, because of so many different things. So I want you to record yourself, if you, if you would please, to see, first of all, are you going to be at the right contact point, which is out in front of you? And second of all, are you in a position where it's flush? The reason I have this cutout racket is because I want you to not worry about what happens to the ball. And you noticed likely that my first couple of forehands weren't all that great. It's difficult to, uh, to show and do at the same time. So to f leave you with it, I'm going to exaggerate one more forehand and I'm going to try to hit one more forehand that would be the complete shot if I were to let everything happen the way it should. Always keeping in mind that my contact is in front and I'm truly engaging only the shoulder lift as opposed to anything else to make sure I have a nice long hitting zone and a clean contact point. So here we go. I'm going to turn, self feed. Okay, and the tip of the racket remains on the outside. My arm still has the bent, bent, this slightly bent structure and I lift it from my shoulder. Now I'm letting that swing continue all the way to its completion. And that's all the way over here now, but that's only because of the increased speed and I let it happen. It's not me going over there to that side on purpose, which will then infringe upon my ability to lift and lengthen. Again, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little tip here, that little coaching tip on the forehand and how to clean it up. As always, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't so yet like our videos. Let us know what you think in the comment section below, and I'm looking forward to working with and hearing from you in the future. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.